Hello everyone, let's install a nozzle brush and a purge bucket. If you're here, you must be like me in that you forget to clean or uh, scrub your nozzle prior to every print. And in my case, I'm tired of sometimes inaccurate readings or problems when I try to calibrate my Z offset or um, home the printer. And frankly, I'm also really tired of getting little globs of plastic that have fallen off my print head in the middle of a print ruining a perfectly good print. So to solve the problem, I need to install a purge bucket. The first one I looked at is the decontaminator purge bucket and nozzle scrubber. Uh, this one is probably one of the most recommended models out there, and there are a lot of reasons for it. Uh, it's really simple to build. Um, it's well documented. On top of it, obviously, it has a brush, a nozzle brush, it also has a purge bucket. Uh, it's designed to work around a, a Z end stop switch. And on top of it, it's magnetic. So it's easily to pull out and pop back in. But it also has the added benefit of being um, a bed plate stop as well to help align your bed plate when you're inserting it. So if you don't currently have this on your printer now, or at least a bed stop like this, here you can see me using it on mine. And it's simply the two bolts at the rear that are uh, aligned uh, so you can push your magnetic plate right up against them and that way have it aligned perfectly. Uh, if you don't have one of these, uh, it's really worth looking at the decontaminator. I highly recommend it. However, for me, uh, this was a problem. As you can see, I've got my Euclid probe mounted here on the rail, which is a problem. And on top of it, I've already got the bed stops installed. They work really well. I don't want to remove them. The second option um, by Midnight 3DP is the bed pan. Um, this is beautifully designed. I really like the way this looks. And as you can see here, it's designed to operate where my Euclid probe is mounted. On top of it, it has a bottom base plate that um, has Wago mounts, which is awesome. I wish I would have known this before because this is how I would have attached all the wiring from my bed plate to the printer. And uh, as you can see, um, the bucket along with the brush are magnetically installed and uh, it's easy to pop out, replace, and it's got this really nice little deck plate. The problem with it for me is I'm going to have to partially disassemble my rails. I just don't want to do that to get that Wago plate to um, slide in nicely and to bolt properly. The other problem is on the right hand rail on the inside I've got my Z end stop and I don't want to take that off either. So I had to pass on this but I highly recommend it. It's really beautifully done. The next is this one I found at Printables and this is really designed for the V0.1 um, but it's really clever. Uh, this uses a servo that you attach to your MCU and on that servo arm is attached the brush that it can extend um, and deploy when you need it or remove it. Um, it was going to require a little bit of work uh, to get on my 2.4 and I don't know, I wasn't quite ready uh, for that job, but still it's brilliant. So I found the second one on printables and this is the nozzle scrubber with the little magnetic bucket. It's designed specifically in my case for the 2.4. Um, it's got a brush holder, it's got the bucket, and it mounts to the rail. Um, this one's designed to mount to the right of a rail, which means you can use it in this photo it shows you, all the way to the right side of your plate. But in my case, it worked out fantastic because it fit on the right side of the other rail and allowed me to not rearrange anything else on my printer. So here's the purge bucket that I printed. Um, you can see nice space here for um, particles to drop. Uh, this is the brush holder. You'll have to cut the brush slides in, but with a couple of T-nuts, I can bolt it on the rail uh, without having to disassemble anything after all those changes I made to my bed some time ago. Here you can see the two spots for the 6x3 magnets for the um, brush holder, and these are the two spots for the magnets for the bucket, and these two, of course, connect to each other via these magnets and uh, they fit in into each other really quite nicely, like so. 
So it's only these two small parts that you need to print. It shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours to print these. You'll need four um, six millimeter by three millimeter magnets, the super strong ones. Um, in addition, you will need a couple of T-nuts to mount them to the rail. You'll also need a couple of uh, M3 by eight millimeter screws to bolt it all together. And of course, then you need a, a brass bristle brush. Um, I got this on Amazon. It's really quite cheap. We'll be cutting the handle off and it'll slide right into the holder here, which will hold it in place. Before you go ahead and cut your bristle brush, your brass bristle brush, make sure you touch it to a magnet and make sure the magnets don't stick. For if they do, it's actually steel wires and it'll wear out your nozzle. So if like me, you had a hard time getting the magnets fully inserted into the holes. I did get them partially, but I couldn't get them all the way. And so a little trick, as long as you're gentle, um, get a couple of washers um, that are ideally the hole in the center is smaller than the magnet itself. Make sure you get one in the front and the back. And frankly, if <laughs> they stick to the magnets, even better. And then here I'm taking my channel lock and giving them a slight squeeze to make sure they're flush. And again, I apologize for the blurriness here, um, but this actually worked pretty well. Um, but again, be gentle because of course, as you know, ABS under too much pressure will turn white and split on you. So uh, this is a pretty good trick. Works for me every time. So the next step is to saw the handle off the brass bristle brush. And I've got this super small miter saw. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> it's not the easiest thing for me to use. Uh, but in this case, I'm cutting in an angle um, where... <laughs> Well, when you take a look at how it fits into the brush holder, you'll see what I mean. I'm cutting this slightly at an angle um, just to make sure all the bristles are intact. And um, you can see, well, you'll see in a minute here, <laughs> um, how this just slides right in, assuming you have the right length. Notice I have some sandpaper here. I had to use some sandpaper. Uh, to get this to work previously and um, you'll probably have to do the same. But anyway, it's pretty easy. So let's mount it with the T-nuts and the M3 by 8 bolts. And you can see here I'm sing it, sitting it in the rail. Um, you might have to adjust the spacing just a little bit. After I did this, I actually had to move it even closer to the bed. In fact, almost touching it as close as I could get to the bed. This of course will vary by printer by printer depending on where your bed plate is positioned and how your printer is tuned um, in terms of um, where zero, where 350 is, or whatever measurements are for your printer bed. And once we have it in place here, you can see how the purge bucket just pops right in magnetically. So to adjust this, the first thing I did was home the printer. And then using the controls on the printer, um, as you can see here, use whatever software you're using, uh, use the uh, tool movement keys, uh, the arrow keys, uh, to move the head around to the proper position, um, or at least the position that you'll want the nozzle to go to when you want the brush to work. And as you jog the head around, um, the X values, the Y values, and the Z values you'll have here, you'll want to pay attention to. And in fact, you'll want to write these down. Uh, one position right at the start of where you want the head to be um, just before it starts the cleaning operation. And so you can see here, I'm moving it by hand and, um, and then writing down those values. And here, uh, a little bit of a close-up, you can see me jog this over so I can see the print head get just in front of the brush. And now you can see me adjust the Z, again, to get it low enough so the print head will get cleaned as it moves through the brush. Once you've got it where you want it, um, it might take a little bit, a little bit of experimentation. Make sure you write down the X value, the Y value, and the Z value 
from your control panel uh, because these will be the values we'll be entering into the software in a couple of minutes. And here I'm also testing to check and see will 50 millimeters be enough to get me over to the other side of the brush and off it. Um, so at least I know the value that I need to enter in to move the brush back and forth to scrub it. Uh, once you find that value, and again in my case 50 worked, write 50 down so you don't forget we're about to put it into the software. So next, go to your configuration files. And in this case, we're gonna create an all new file and I'm going to call it purge.cfg. So hit the plus, get the option to add file. Sorry, this is a little cut off as all I'm doing is typing purge.cfg. You can name it anything you could like. Here you can see the file now appears at the top of the list. And here I'm going back to the project on printables.com. Uh, the no nozzle scrubber project. Scroll down on the details and here in the text is the code that you'll want to add to uh, the CFG file we just created. So here I'm simply selecting it all and copying. And now I can go in and edit my purge.cfg file and I simply open it up. You can see we just created it. It's empty and so now I'm going to paste this in uh, using Control V and this is the core code is all we're going to do now is change some of these values with what we wrote down. So don't copy these values exactly as I have them. Make sure you test to generate the numbers of your own. Even if your printer is the same size as mine, it's highly unlikely like these values will be the same. But here you can see the X value I wrote down when the nozzle was just in front of the brush getting ready to get started. I modified the X value. I also modified the Y value as well to exactly the values I wrote down. Here I'm simply adding a little comment um, to remind myself and others that this is for a Voron 2.4 with a 350 bed size. So this um, variable start Z is the value that I wrote down when I dropped the Z height of the head to the level I wanted it to be when I wanted to drag through the brush and get scrubbed. So make sure you enter that value here. So once you've got that, then go on down to the uh, wipe quantity and it's set to 10, which I thought was maybe a little bit excessive. We'll see with time, um, but I'm changing this to six. So it'll move in a direction six times of 50 millimeters to scrub the brush. And finally, the raise distance. Where do you want Z to go back to? So my Z started at 10, I went down to three to scrub, and now that the scrub is over, I want it to go back to 10. So I'm moving it back up. Um, here, I'm just taking a look real quick, um, just checking the code. You can see here, um, the, uh, this value is setting it into absolute mode. So when it moves around, it'll use the values we have set up above. And here we can see G1, which means start at the X and Y positions we set above at that feed rate. And now move Z to three, which we set above at a speed rate of 1500. And here we've got a for loop that's simply going to be going back and forth um, to get the six um, brushes through the nozzle. And then finally, uh, set Z back to the original distance of 10. Once you're done, hit save and close uh, to your purge.cfg file. And now go to your printer.cfg file. We'll open that. And here at the top of the file, um, where my other includes are, I'm going to include the purge.cfg file. So every time Clipper starts up, it'll load that file in, it'll read what's in there, and it'll understand how to um, clean the nozzle when I tell it to. So when you're done, uh, hit save and restart. We want Clipper to reload all these values. Uh, so at this point, our printer should know what to do when it encounters this command. And here you see it restarting. Got the little extra warning messages and we're back. So now to test at your council. Uh, <laughs> be ready to stop in case something goes wrong, but just type in clean underscore nozzle and hit send.
uh, you'll most likely have to hit home before you execute that since we just restarted the printer. Um, so I hit home, I restart, and then it scrubs as commanded. Now, make sure you insert this wherever you need to, most likely before the start of each print. Might not be a bad idea before the start of each home either. And that's it. Please be sure to hit subscribe in case you haven't. And again, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope you find this useful.